Hey guys, in today's video, I'm going to be breaking down how I made this flow edit in DaVinci Resolve. I'll show you how I go about my clip selection process, my time remaps, my transitions, my one framers, and at the end of the video, I'll show you how I took my footage from looking like this to this using Dehancer, a film emulation plugin, link in the description. Also, feel free to join the Discord server, super nice started down in the description. You can ask me any questions. Okay, so for clip selection, what I basically do is I take the full movie, I sit down and I, and I cut it up into clips that I would using the edits as you can see right here i cut them up and then when i'm done cutting them up i make every clip a compound clip and i put it right here so it's easy for me to select and also use multiple timelines so it's easy for me to organize the clips when making flow edits you want to aim for clips that flow each other really well for example if i have my character appearing on the right of the screen i expect the other character to appear on the left side of the screen also the motion of the swords carries this so she brings the sword up as well as her and it looks really nice on top of that we have this sequence right here so basically what I'm doing here is building anticipation or tension. I've seen Fury use this method quite a lot. It's really cool. So basically you have one clip down below that has an S graph for the time remap, but then you have a clip that's on top of it that appears and it looks really, really cool. And it's like, it builds anticipation or tension for the flow edit and it also flows really well. So basically this is a sped up clip. I sped it up by about 181 right there and the original clip looks like that i just squashed it down so that it makes a lot of sense for the edit and yeah that's basically what makes good clip selection as you can see even in my fight scenes right it flows really well so it goes right side of the screen to left and then right side again okay here in my opening scene i just have a regular clip of my character nothing special but in my adjustment layer i studied it out with a review using a hotspot. This hotspot is found in the Sapphire plugin and I usually use it to review my scenes like this. Or if you want to, you can grab a solid and cut it for one frame and make it white. And you can have basically a nice review just like that. And if you don't have Sapphire, you can use your brightness and contrast node to make the review. Let's try and make it right now. So grab your brightness and contrast node right here, put it into your node tree, and then go to the beginning of the clip right here and then go to your low and high slider right here. Click on the keyframe, go back five or four frames if you want. You know what, I'll do seven, then click that. Go back to your first one and then take it down just like that. Go up to your spline panel, hit Control A and then S and then Control F to make the graph bigger and then make a graph that's like reasonably sharp and then bring this up like this. Make sure when you're doing hotspot or brightness and contrast effects, the graph is very, very like loose and not too harsh. Okay, when you're done with that, it should look like that right there. I personally just love using the hotspot node. I feel like it looks way better, but yeah. Okay, from there, we then have that slight transition right there. So the way I made this was in my same adjustment layer. First thing you want to do is grab the transform node right here, put it into your node tree, go to your second to last frame, keyframe go back five or six frames one two three four five keyframe right there go to your tenth frame then when you transform go to the x-axis and take it like 47 you want to keep it between 47 and not 30 because 30 is a bit much go down to your edges click mirror and then go up to your spline panel like that and take everything else so it looks cleaner again ctrl a ctrl f Yes, and then this time you want to make a sharp graph like this. Just follow what I'm doing. You can grab this handle right here, hold out so it doesn't move around and then join them together like that. Okay, after that, hit shift space and type in Ikawa Easy Offset right there. You can get this macro from Ikawa's pack, link in the description, it's free and I recommend downloading it and always using it in your edits because he has really, really cool stuff. When you put it in, go to the 10th frame right here, keyframe the X offset, take it down and go to the last frame and just take it back up like that. This carries over the motion. And once you're done, you should have something that looks like this. Yeah, really nice and really simple. From there, I have a couple one framers that I used. The first one is just an adjustment layer with a directional blur node right here. And I took up the length, as you can see right there in the direction the slide is going. I just make that straight like that. And then I 
do the same thing for the next one right here and it just gives you that yeah then i think i took up um in the direction i want i put the brightness and contrast node and then i took the gain up a bit to give it like it gives the transition a really cool yeah there we go and then from there you want to go to your second adjustment layer so that you can continue the slide motion okay so here we're going to continue the motion so we're going to delete this and i'm going to show exactly how to continue the motion put your node graph right here from your transform node keyframe the start of the clip go back to like 18 or 17 now i'll choose 18 then go to the beginning again and then just a bit not too much right there take it to the right a bit as you can see right there and then make sure your edges are mirrored spline panel again control a control f and s this time take it to the opposite direction of the other graph so we'll go up like this then we'll hold out and bring this like that once you're done everything put together should look like that which is just really cool so yeah that's how i basically do my slide transitions my hotspots and some of the framers okay after that to tie this all together we have a shake here i rarely use shakes in my edits because i'm really bad at making shakes i use sapphire's s dissolve shake you can use the shakes in ikawa's pack and watch cloud's tutorial on how to make shakes for me personally i just use a dissolve shake thanks to soup he made a really good video as well check that out and it basically just looks like that i won't show you how to make this shake because i'm not really good at teaching shakes but this is a shake basically and all this tied together makes this look really 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 cool okay so for our next clip i'm going to show you how i did my time remap so the first thing you want to do is hit shape spacebar type in time stretcher press enter add it to your notes like that go to the end of your composition right there go back and then scroll to where you want the time remap to start for me i'll just have it start right there and go to the end and then scroll again and i'll have mine end just right there okay so go to your spline panel and again hit ctrl a ctrl f to make the graph bigger s so this time we're going to go for this very light s graph just like that we're going to have it end really abrupt we're going to have it go really fast at the end so make this just a bit sharp like that then we're just going to look at the movement to make sure it's perfect yeah and then when you're done you want to go back to the clip drag the time switch on this side go right here click on flow clamp edges take these two boxes down here go on media in hit control space bar type in optical flow should be right here and add it bring this down like this and then i'll just let this render out and there you go you have a nice smooth motion right there okay after that i'm going to go to my second clip which is this sword clip right here i basically did the same thing that i did but i used this graph right here but i went in depth in how i do my time remarks into inventory resolve i'll link the video down below then after that i just grabbed this shake right here and then i placed it on top of this clip and it looks like this yeah really cool i think this is a shake as well i could be wrong yeah basically it's a slight transition so it basically sides into this clip which carries on the motion as i've showed you how to make slight transitions before and then yeah looks like that and then here of course i have my sped up clip by 108 right here and then we have this other clip right here i added a shake as well it's because it's come from a really high intense movement so i paired it with a shake right there as you can see and then for this clip i basically used this graph for my time remap the same one before but just less less aggressive next clip as well nothing special same time remap and then here another time remap nothing special and here we have a shake i think yeah so when doing fight scenes you want to use shakes a lot when doing fight scenes when having car scenes as well or like when you're making a car edit use shakes a lot so basically when i'm doing my fight scenes or like when i'm doing car edits i speed the clips up by a lot because this is how the original clip looks like it's a bit slow for my liking it could be faster to be honest so i speed it up by like 127 percent it doesn't really matter as long as it looks really cool but don't over speed it up okay here then i paired it up with the two one framers right here that just have direction of blurs and it falls so nice into the movement as you can see right there then here same thing just no more time remap as well as this part this part is just a normal clip there's nothing special here i paired this with the white flash as i showed you how to do it's just one frame of a solid that has been cut for one frame only and then here another adjustment layer in this adjustment layer i've zoomed in on her face a bit and i've made it black and white which i usually like doing i think it looks cool and then i ended it with a couple directional blurs right there 
Yeah, after that, I have my grade. I use the handsaw to make to give me this really, really cool look. Yeah, uh, so this is what I did to achieve this look in the handsaw. The handsaw is a film emulation plugin that basically turns digital footage into filmic looks. You can download the handsaw with the link in the description and use code INAXI to get a 10% discount off the plugin. Okay, so in the handsaw, what I basically did was I went to my film section. I chose Kodak Portra right here. You can choose any other film stock because the handsaw has multiple options as you can see right here. So I just choose this one and with it, it looks just like this as you can see before and after after that i went to my film developer and here i just and then here i just tweaked the colors a bit i added a lot of saturation a lot of color separation and contrast to my scene right there as you can even see my color graphs down here and then i added some film compression this basically just uh compresses the highlights and makes it roll off a bit smoother and then from there expand i really don't use expand and there i have print so basically what print is it's basically the stock your footage will be printed out in and i use the kodak 2383 as you can see it looks really really cool geez yeah this just brings the look together really well and then i went down to my film grain i chose the 65 millimeter iso 250 and then i just cranked it up a lot for tiktok edits you want to make sure it has a lot of grain i found that the quality is a lot better when your footage has grain for some reason it just turns out really good and then yeah that's basically what i did all right guys i hope you enjoyed the breakdown make sure you join the discord server a link in the description ask me any question at all and i also have a bunch of assets and tools that are in the discord server that you can use to help you edit use code inaxi if you want to purchase the hansa and yeah uh thank you guys for 300 subscribers that's kind of crazy i've grown that much in one month i'm definitely going to make more breakdowns and maybe some in-depth tutorials in the future so thank you guys for watching and i'll see you in the next one